What's up everybody? Thank you all so much for coming back for another video. I appreciate you taking the time to do so. I hope you had a great 4th of July and hope you've been having a great week. So in this video I'm going to talk to you about how to choose a calligraphy pen because for some people that could be a very difficult thing to do because let's just be honest there are tons and tons of calligraphy pens out there that you could purchase or use same with and procreate there's so many brushes that you could download and use and really it could even be overwhelming to the point of you not knowing which direction to go in and if you haven't done so yet if you're new here make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already as well as give this video a thumbs up and with that said now let's go and get into the video foremost the types of calligraphy pens i'm going to be talking about it's just going to be a few simple ones easy to find at different price points based on what is good for you so the first one is as you all may may or may not be familiar with it is the brush pens brush pens are pens matter of fact let me grab all those pens and continue this video so as I was saying about the different types of pens that you could purchase, you know, find based on different price points, whatever is good for you because obviously th the more higher you go in price, you're gonna have different quality of brush pens from different places and it's gonna be overall different feel, look, quality as price tends to uh you know price tends to determine a lot i'll leave it at that so the first one is your standard tombow brush pen this is the food this is the furunosuke or soke i'll put it here on the screen and this one easy to find you could even find these at michael's if you're in the states and if you're in other parts of the world just check your local arts and craft store or even any arts and craft store that you have in your country and then the next one this is the pilot parallel pen the blue one six millimeter and this is really I had to say what all started for me when I started taking calligraphy seriously this was the pen that I had and I think I still have I may still have my very first one these pens last they last I could just say that just the main thing is is taking care of them just like anything else and automatic pens these are where I purchased them 15 I think it was like $15 a piece the only thing you have to be careful of is whenever you use them, you gotta make sure to wash them. I mean, like washing and getting out the ink. Cause this one still has remnants of some of the inks that I have used. And these two plates, you can see, hold on. Hopefully you can see that in the camera these are this is what holds the ink and these pens I would not recommend for beginners if you're into broad edge calligraphy because it takes a good bit of practice to get them down and especially when I say get them down get a good understanding of how to go about controlling the ink flow and by the ink flow, I mean whenever you're writing, how much to press. I mean, I'm, I've am i been using them for quite a while, so I've got a good understanding of how they work from my point of view. From somebody else's point of view with more experience than me, they may have a totally different way to go about using automatic pens. And then here, this is the Pilot Plumex. This is a, you know, a good, I would say like everyday pen if you like writing with fountain pens. And it's plastic, not too expensive. 
and I believe maybe not too hard to find as always the Google machine google.com or you could even try your local arts and craft store and see but now I'm going to talk about how I go about choosing the pins all right so for me the way how I go about choosing which pin to use for calligraphy the way how I choose this is from my point of view and what works for me if you want to you know take the same approach feel free to so whenever I'm working on a piece whether it's for a client and or if it's for a poster design and if it is for you know just to really push myself and get out of my comfort zone I will first start with okay so this is what I'm going to be writing what emotion do I want to evoke with the piece once it is completed and with that what can I do to make sure I get that message across in my way from my point of view and to at the same time what what can I do that I did in my previous pieces that doesn't look like I'm recycling and doing the same thing maybe I could go to a different place and work on it or maybe I could do sketches first do sketching more just like doing sketches like this using the transfer what is this trans no transparency I forgot what this paper is called parchment paper or trace yeah tracing paper maybe I could do tracing paper like this do a couple of these take a picture take it into procreate and then take it into illustrator and vectorize it that way and you know really recognizing whatever I am into certain routines about stuff using the same pen over and over I want to be a person that you come to my Etsy shop Instagram my website and get inspired from and see like oh my goodness all his work is so dope I could dig it let me go ahead and hit that follow button let me hit that subscribe button on YouTube to keep it simple the way how to choose a pen for you decide what type of calligraphy you want to learn first and foremost if you want to learn script calligraphy I would recommend picking up a brush pen first and doing the drills and that you know I say picking up a brush pen first pick up one just like this it's not too expensive it will not break the bank and I say picking up a brush pen so you don't start getting into calligraphy and realize all right this is not for me so you're not spending too much of your hard-earned money and having a bunch of supplies sitting around that you have to end up donating and brush pens for calligraphy especially script work out very well it teaches you the different pressure points and you know sooner or later after you feel comfortable with a brush pen doing script purchase yourself an oblique holder learn about how to use that and you'll have a good base and a good base of learning the different pressure points to use and if you are like me more to broad edge calligraphy such as gothic lettering well gothic black lettering well black letters Along that line, so we could just keep it simple and say broad edge lettering. Pick up yourself pilot, pa pilot parallel pen first before moving to automatic pen because this is going to be more affordable and easier to find than the automatic pens. Automatic pens, you should, for me, the way how I did it, I got very comfortable with pilot parallel pens first. And then getting automatic pen was like a graduation gift to I felt you know I've got to this far 
I feel this comfortable, let me go ahead and treat myself and get something better for once and see what happens. All right, hopefully that was, oh, I didn't talk about the Pilot Plumex. It's really just like a cheap, good pen to carry if you want to practice your calligraphy on the go. But you know one thing, I have never been a person to carry something like this in my pockets on a day-to-day -day basis, simply because I don't want it to start leaking if they do. And hopefully this video was helpful for you being able to decide how to choose a calligraphy pen for yourself. And if you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments below and let me know what your thoughts are on this format of videos. And I will see you in the next one. And also, have a great week.